afternoon, everyone. Frankly, I thought the introduction would be much worse. Um, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, or just gentlemen, um, so the goal of uh, this uh, session uh, today uh, is something really very cool. Uh, so my objective is to um, <coughs> enable you to use the WSO2 analytics platform uh, to play Sherlock uh, in uh, the ever-changing fraud landscape uh, of uh, e-commerce. Uh, so let's hope that I achieve that. So the obligatory bad news uh, is that um, Forrester research findings uh, predicted uh, $4 trillion uh, as fraud losses uh, for the year 2015. So that includes uh, a payment fraud, uh, operational fraud, accounting fraud, uh, all types of fraud really. Um, but uh, what's um, really kind of interesting is that that amounts to 5% of global GDP. So that means, um, in a smaller scale, uh, businesses are kind of, um, <coughs> uh, there's a danger of businesses losing 5% of their business revenue uh, and that money just going out the window uh, due to fraud losses. So understandably, there's a large market uh, in the uh, enterprise fraud management uh, space and uh, uh, there are some enterprise fraud management solutions available as well. Um, but uh, there are certain ups and downs in some of these products. So, uh, every good story starts with bad news and it's preceded by or followed by good news. Uh, so the good news is that we can combine this very powerful WSO2 analytics platform uh, with domain expertise uh, to um, kind of uh, make a digital version of uh, Sherlock Holmes. Um, uh, why, I, why it is so important to combine domain expertise uh, into uh, the WSO2 analytics platform is because uh, fraud is a very, um, it's, a, it's a large umbrella term and um, what would be perceived as possibly fraudulent activity in uh, company A, which might be uh, a, a small time, uh, a small online store, uh, might be just business as usual um, in the large multinational. So, therefore, uh, it is very important that uh, we cater the fraud detection functionality, uh, the rules, uh, the models uh, that we use to detect fraud uh, according to the business that you're in and the size of business that you run and also the kind of customers that you uh, entertain. So, as I said, uh, we are not experts in, in the different domains, but it's extremely important that we be able to convert this uh, domain expertise into uh, generic rules which we can use to um, detect fraud in real time. So how we are going to do this is by using the WSO2 analytics platform's real-time analytics capabilities. So if some of you have uh, and hopefully you have um, attended uh, some of the previous talks or tutorials where we spoke about uh, the WSO2 uh, analytics platform, you'd know that uh, the analytics platform or the WSO2 uh, data analytics server has um, batch, analytic, uh, batch analy analytics, uh, predictive analytics, and also real-time analytics capabilities. So, uh, what we are going to do here is we're trying to now, since we need to detect this fraud in real time, we're trying to convert this domain knowledge or this domain expertise into generic rules. So let's take a look at the typical fraudster. I mean, this is the fraudster that you and I are comfortable with, or we're not comfortable with, but you and I are familiar with. Uh, uh, if we look at the credit card space, the typical fraudster uh, would probably use stolen cards, um, buy expensive stuff in large quantities, uh, very quickly, uh, mostly at odd hours, research shows, um, at odd, uh, ship to many places, lest, uh, you know, reducing their chances of uh, getting um, caught, uh, and 
obviously their transactions get rejected often. So this is a layman's kind of perspective of uh, what uh, fraudulent activity might look like in the credit card space. Now, how do we convert these um, a generic uh, fraudulent behavior into a set of rules uh, that we can uh, run in real time. The answer is very simple. What we do is we turn them into Siddhi queries. So Siddhi is the processing engine of the complex event processor of our analytics platform. And uh, the task at hand is very simple. You just convert these things into Siddhi queries. Let's take a look at how to do that. So transaction velocity. Now, transaction velocity is a very uh, common term in, uh, the uh, in the payment fraud landscape. Uh, transaction velocity means uh, the speed at which you would purchase uh, items uh, in sequence. So how long does it take for subsequent transactions uh, to happen for a certain item? So for different businesses, it would be different. The normal transaction velocity would be very different. For example, let's take a, a bookstore and uh, a jewelry store. So now, uh, the transaction velocity for a bookstore. Now, my husband and I, we, we read a lot. So we buy books at least once a month, right? So our transaction velocity for uh, buying books from the bookstore, once a month. Um, expensive jewelry, I've got two rings from the time I've known him, so transaction velocity for expensive jewelry um, is not uh, as fast. Um, so over here, what we're trying to do here is we're basically converting that uh, velocity into a Siddhi query. It's very simple. What we do is we listen in to the transaction stream. So as you may have heard in the previous talks, um, when you do anything with the complex event processor, uh, everything is presented in terms of an event stream. So we listen into the event stream, we take an event, uh, we denote it as E1, let's say, and then we are looking for other transactions from the same card, uh, two or more transactions, in fact, from the same card to happen within five minutes of each other. So if multiple transactions from the same card happen within five minutes, that's probably a very high uh, transaction velocity. Uh, we select some information from each of these events and we send it out into a fraud stream, which will then go out uh, to uh, a dashboard or as an email or an SMS to someone who will take a look at it. So what we've done here is we have E1 and E2. So E2 can be one or more transactions. Over here, I'm capturing two or more transactions and we are capturing some data from uh, E1 I'm getting the card number, and I'm getting each of the transaction IDs from the uh, other events. So just like we did that, it's very simple, really, to convert all those uh, other uh, fraudulent uh, activity patterns that I presented earlier to uh, see the queries uh, very simply. So now, we can write as many uh, fraud rules using Siddhi as we want. But what about that genuine customer who actually wants to buy the most expensive item from your store? Are you going to stop that guy from doing that or are you going to delay him and inconvenience him because your, fraudulent, uh, your fraud detection system is very strong? Uh, allowing him to maybe forego doing business with you and going to the next guy who uh, doesn't inconvenience him or delay him? So there can be a genuine customer behind any of these uh, fr fraudulent activity patterns. So blocking these customers from doing transactions with you just because you have a really uh, comprehensive um, fraud detection system can really harm your business. So as you can see, there can be a, a genuine guy behind any of these actions. Um, so blocking genuine customers is not only going to, uh, it's, it's, so having a really comprehensive uh, fraud detection system uh, might get rid of the fraud, but also might get rid of a, a large amount of your business revenue uh, because it's, it's too strong. So we need to stop this. Uh, we need to kind of evade blocking genuine customers, uh, which could be counterproductive and costly. How do you do that? 
So it's a very simple uh, solution once again. All we've got to do is we've got to combine those uh, different rules uh, into one fantastic single number. How do we do that? We provide a weightage to each of the, each of the rules, uh, depending on how severe uh, that rule can be. So if, if someone is using a blacklisted card, then it's quite severe. But if someone is doing a transaction with uh, a large transaction amount, it's not that severe, but we want to capture its effects as well. So we get this single number, and then we use, use a threshold to reject transactions which have a score beyond that uh, threshold or limit. So if you just bought a diamond ring, we don't want to stop you. Uh, we want to, in fact, uh, congratulate you or uh, you know, give you a complimentary uh, bouquet of flowers uh, to go with your proposal. But if you bought 20 diamond rings uh, in 15 minutes at 3 a.m. from an IP address in uh, Nigeria, uh, you still could be a genuine customer, but uh, we want to take a look at it a little bit more. So as an equation or a formula, how this works is very simple. Now, we wrote Siddhi queries for each of those uh, fraud indicators. All we do is we multiply that result by a weightage. And as you can see, I have uh, engineered the weightages in a way that certain rules get a, a, a small weight and certain rules get a very high weight. All right. Seems to be good. Are we safe? I mean, we've, we've converted the domain knowledge into generic rules. Uh, we've gotten rid of a, a lot of the false positives. We're pretty good to go, right? Except what you're looking at is a desk of a bunch of um, organized uh, fraud, uh, credit card fraudsters uh, who were raided. So these guys, uh, their, their career uh, is, is, is fraud, right? Uh, it's their day job. So they know about generic rules. They know about fraud scoring. And if it's their day job, they're not going to take a chance. They're not going to go and hang out at an ATM hoping for somebody to leave their card aside and go. They're going to, they're going to engineer their uh, transaction patterns to go beyond the, the scores and um, the rules you've put in place. And to find an answer to that problem, we turn to good old mathematics. So Markov models, um, are, uh, um, uh, it's, it's a stochastic process. Uh, it's, it's a model which, um, which can model a stochastic process where you assume the biggest assumption is that uh, the future states uh, in, a, uh, in a random sequence of events, the future states depend on the present state. So what does that mean in English? Um, uh, can be really uh, easily captured through this picture. So there are two states. E and A, and the probability of someone in state E to go to state A is 0.9%, but the probability of someone to stay in state E continuously is much less. So we apply this to credit card fraud, or we apply this to payment systems. How do we do that? We basically classify each transaction into a state. So we look at different attributes of a transaction. For example, we can see whether a transaction has a high-valued item uh, in that uh, transaction. Or we can, see, we can look at the transaction duration between that transaction and the one immediately before that. And, and we can classify it based on whether it's a high-value transaction or a low-value transaction. So H for high, L for low. So, for example, if there's a transaction with a high-valued uh, item and uh, a, a short duration, we'd call it HS. And similarly, we'll take all our historic data and we'll, we'll classify each of those transactions into these states. What we have to do next is very simple. We count them and we calculate the, the probabilities for transactions to go from one state to the other. And we come up with a probability matrix. And finally, to cap it all, what we do is we use this probability matrix with incoming transactions 
transaction sequences, and we compute metrics where we capture the sequence of events incoming, and we, we check that with the probabilities in the probability matrix. So if the probability of a sequence of transactions happening is very low, then we flag that at fraud. If not, we just let it go. Now, the great thing about this is we don't just stop at creating the probabilities from historic data, but we update that probability matrix with all the real-time transactions that are coming in. So that's going to make it very interesting because that will now help this model to learn from transactions coming in. Therefore, now this system is changing to um, react to seasonal movements and seasonal trends. Not only that, it is also now evolving with fraud, with new fraudulent activity patterns as well. So it's great, really, because for one, it's, it's uh, adapting to changes in, in, in uh, the payment uh, landscape. It's adapting to fraudulent activity in, in e-commerce. And thirdly, it's now modeling stuff that you and I could never have thought of uh, using the domain expertise that we have. So computerizing that decision. So now we have some really cool stuff. We have, we have a really powerful base now. Using the real-time data, uh, we have encoded domain knowledge into generic rules. We created uh, scoring to get rid of false positives. And now we have used Markov modeling to detect rare activity patterns. So, have we cracked the case? Well, um, we are great in the real time now. Uh, we are able to um, detect a lot of fraudulent uh, transactions uh, that are coming in. However, even with all of these really powerful uh, tools and really powerful um, models, we will still um, not, we, we, we won't be able to detect all um, fraudulent activity. There will be various transactions that go unnoticed even with this powerful tool set. So what do we do uh, over here? We bring in batch analytics and we make it even more powerful. And to do that, I'd like to just show you a small clip uh, where we uh, created a dashboard uh, using batch analytics and uh, real-time analytics. So here is a, a, a dashboard. I wonder whether it's a, it's a bit hazy, but it says no possible fraudulent transactions. So over there, uh, there seems to be um, a little... Um, uh, are you playing it? Okay. So we are clicking on... So over there, there seems to be an alert. We are clicking on the alert. Okay, so this is giving us some information about uh, the transaction that we got from real time. It is showing us which um, rules were violated. And then we are going to investigate on that. There's a little button which is, I think, outside of this space. So over here, we are now querying transactions from a batch analytics, which are related to that transaction that we captured in real time. So over here, what we've done is we've shown the a number of transactions done by the same card number in the past, which possibly was not captured from the real-time rules, however, are related. And what do you see? We visualize them, uh, and we are able to look at uh, you know, details about them. So it shows the origin, the IP address uh, that was used to uh, do that transaction, and now it also shows where it was shipped to. And as you can see, uh, oh, it's available in color as well. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> um, uh, as you can see, uh, there are some relationships over there. So now, if I was a fraud analyst looking at this screen, I would like to go into um, that IP address and now query some more uh, transactions that were initiated from that IP address. They might be from different card numbers, but who knows where it will lead me to. So basically, what we've done over here is something really cool. We not only stop at, we, we don't stop at um, detecting fraud in real time, but now we are using the power of batch analytics to bring in, uh, to query and filter data 
uh, from uh, the historical data and then dig deeper, which will enable us not to just um, find the isolated fraud incident, but also to uh, maybe break into large fraud rings, multinational fraud rings. So, um, <clears throat> can we go back to the slides, please? Yes. So, dig using big. Um, this is how we use big data to dig deeper. And uh, as uh, Srinath mentioned in uh, his talk in the morning, selectively dig, because it's, it might be humanly impossible or even computationally impossible for us to um, uh, analyze each and every transaction that your system goes through. However, if there are some leads given to us from the real-time analytics, we can then selectively go into uh, a subset of events and um, use them to analyze uh, what happened uh, using those connections. So, using the batch analytics, we provide access to historical data. Uh, we make querying and filtering very easy and intuitive. Uh, and also provide visualizations, useful visualizations, uh, which help isolate incidents and uh, unearth other connections. So, um, here's a fraud detection toolkit uh, that we built using just the WSO2 uh, data analytics server. Uh, it has a real-time analytics, uh, batch analytics, and predictive analytics. Now, I spoke about how we, how we have used real-time analytics uh, and batch analytics. Now, uh, when our WS2 machine learner comes out, uh, it's only going to make this even more beautiful because uh, the predictive analytics part is now going to use the batch data to build its own model, maybe cluster the transactions uh, into uh, several clusters of normal transactions, and then provide uh, uh, an operator for the real-time analytics, where the, real -time an uh, where the complex event processor is now able to see whether the incoming transaction belongs to any of these clusters, or whether it is a certain distance away from any of those clusters, uh, giving us a signal that this might be uh, kind of anomalous uh, transaction and hence a flag is a possible fraud. So, um, it's, 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 so as you can see that different types of analytics are working beautifully together. The real-time analytics is uh, giving alerts and uh, using that we get more data from batch analytics to identify other connections and now the predictive analytics is using the batch data to create models which is looped back into the predictive, uh, to the real-time antics, where it's once again used to uh, capture more and more fraudulent activity patterns. So if you want to build a dashboard, you can build it within uh, the DAS, uh, which we have done uh, as a Jaggery app, or if you, want, uh, if you want to integrate it to some other system that you have or a dashboard that you already have, you can take it out as a web app, and uh, you can just have WSO2 uh, DAS talking to it. So basically, uh, the sequence of events would be, uh, so events would come in to the WSO2 DAS, um, the real-time analytics will capture uh, anomalous uh, activity and alert, send an alert to the dashboard, and then the dashboard will query um, other data from the batch analytics and uh, provide that much more uh, power to a fraud analyst to crack the case. So what we've done is we've, uh, we've done a few use cases. So what I took you through is payment fraud. Uh, so you, you uh, connect your payment system to, uh, you, s you publish your uh, payment uh, events into the WSO2 DAS and uh, the whole thing takes over. Uh, Anti-money laundering is a very similar use case. This is where um, organized uh, criminals uh, basically use a banking network to uh, launder money. So you have uh, money that you make out of criminal activity and you introduce it into the banking network. So what you do there is uh, there are several patterns, that, uh, uh, the, uh, several known patterns where um, uh, they deposit uh, small chunks of um, money into an account uh, you know, uh, during the day or uh, they use dormant accounts. Uh, and, you know, there are various domain-specific rules there as well. So all you, all you do is you just write the rules uh, based on that domain and use all of those things, um, Markov models and fraud scoring, uh, to, do the, to, to go through the same process for this use case. 
Another interesting uh, uh, use case we recently uh, did a demo for is identity fraud. So what we did is we combined uh, or we connected our uh, identity server uh, to publish um, login events and uh, password change events to uh, the WSO2 analytics platform so that um, the analytics platform will now look at uh, uh, Things like you know multiple logins from the same username during a very short period of t time uh, from different IPs, um, etc. So we wrote a couple of rules there as well, and um, this also has become a very trending uh, use case for anomaly detection. So <laughs> I leave you with this. Um, as you can see, I'm a fan of Sherlock Holmes. Um, uh, we have uh, the, the, we are able to use the analytics platform uh, to, um, re to to make a really powerful uh, fraud detection system and uh, to really cater it to your needs uh, uh, using the different uh, analytics capabilities. Uh, so, if you're interested uh, to continue this dialogue, uh, come and have a chat and. Uh, we'll be able to see how we can uh, uh, help you uh, create an enterprise fraud management system, either for your business or for your customers' businesses. Thank you.